Gentlemen, thank you so much for being with me again on the show. Everybody, you know, remind everybody what you do. Greg, we'll start with you. Uh, certainly. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Greg Williams, president and founder of Arcadia Cognorati. I invented human behavior pattern recognition and analysis a long time ago. It's also known as HBPRNA. Uh, I'm an architect of a number of highly successful programs, a record for the Department of Defense and Department of Justice. Uh, Arcadia is a small, agile group of training developers specializing in human behavior and human performance. Very cool. And Brian, remind everybody yeah. who you are. That was pretty cool. I'm the senior vice president of operations for that company. So I apparently do all of that too. It sounds better when someone else is. <laughs> it sounds like that. a cool thing, actually. Yeah. It sounds I know. Like, oh, wow. Well, that's that's <laughs> looking for work, folks. <laughs> I work I work with Greg uh, doing exactly what he talked about, uh, training and consulting all around uh, human behavior and the limits of human uh, cognitive performance. And, um, you, you know, so that I'm the senior VP of operations for the company. So I help plan everything out. We help develop stuff and, you know, we, I'm all the things we'll get into today, I'm sure. Uh, but yeah, I help out with that. Very cool. And also, Brian, I think you have said on your your show, Left of Greg, that you can officiate weddings. Is that true? I, I can. Uh, weddings, funerals, and other religious rites is technically how it is. Uh, well, at least that's what my laminated card that I ordered online says. And it, it, for some places, that's good enough. I've, I've officiated one wedding so far, and I might be doing another one here next year. So Very cool. You got to wear like a special hat or something, Brian? I don't know. <laughs> you can. I mean, it's okay. that's optional. You don't have to, but I mean, it wouldn't wouldn't you want someone officiating your wedding to wear something special? I mean, oh, I would, absolutely. I would want a jaunty hat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Big funny hat. Um, exactly. So, so I got to train with you guys a couple of years ago out at Liberty University and yeah. absolutely loved every second of it. I know you guys just wrapped up another session there. Tell us how it went. That uh, Liberty's great. We get treated really, really well there. We have sort of that in-house three-day program with their criminal justice and, and Helm School of Government. So we're kind of with them uh, in that. We're, we're actually developing a, a course for their um their programs as well so a, an actual college course based on our work so but uh but yeah we it, it went really well it's it's a great time every time we go there there's such wonderful nice people and it is the cleanest college campus i have ever been on in my entire life they must have people out there like with like scissors cutting the grass everything's neat meticulous it's gorgeous and everyone there's so nice and friendly and helpful so uh, we we love we love going there uh, and, and, and another thing I'll tell you, Andy, there's never been two courses that were even remotely close to the same. Yeah. We'll have uh, staff and uh, faculty. We'll have students. We'll have a SWAT team sitting across from some uh, law students. You know that from your own <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, uh, class. You never know who you're going to be in a cell with, you know. Uh, uh, Chris Rhodes is great. Uh, Professor mm -hmm. Rhodes is uh, working with the Helm School of Government uh, that hosts us each semester. And uh, I think it's really important to tell everybody out there the training at Liberty is free. Uh, mm -hmm. Three free days of training and uh, law enforcement professionals get continuing education credit. So uh, I, I think the only other thing is I, I echo Brian's sentiment. Uh, we spent, and, and Andy may know this, you know, uh, Brian and I always do sort of a pre-deployment site survey. And then when we're on the ground, we do a day of recon and then go in to teach the course no matter where we go. And uh, Liberty, the hardest thing to find, graffiti, uh, trash, rubbly. Yeah. Uh, we had to go to neighboring communities and literally ask the coppers because it's really hard to find a clean campus, a very uh, uh, well thought out curriculum for the other courses there. We couldn't be happier. Very cool. Yeah, I, I, I had a fantastic time out there. The course that you guys provided was amazing. Uh, a lot of high level stuff that you actually make very easy for somebody like me uh -huh. to understand. So uh, I really do appreciate it. And for anybody who's listening, who's interested, please, you know, put that on your calendar. Uh, listen for, you know, the Left of Greg podcast. Assume they're going to talk about doing one of those sessions again. It's absolutely worth the drive to to through beautiful Virginia there. Yeah, this is Andy. This past one was number seven. So coming up on the Ocho, the big number eight. <laughs> Ocho. Yeah, we're excited about it. Very good. So you know what? We got to remember that for marketing it. Yeah, the next okay. Time. Called the okay. Ocho. You know, Ocho. it sounds more exciting. I don't know. People might be. It certainly might does. Click on that or something. Uh, sure. So the reason I wanted to talk to you guys today, there was a situation that a, a friend of mine, his wife was in, and it really got me thinking about some things because uh, I'm always trying to learn to get better at stuff. Um, I'll tell you the story briefly, and then I'll, I'll jump into my questions. Uh, my, my buddy's wife was at a mall, and uh, people hear what they think to be gunshots. So there is chaos, pandemonium, people start running and hiding. 
Um, spoiler alert, it was actually balloons popping. There was ever, ne- never actually any danger in this particular situation, but everybody felt like it was real. And it was a long time before anybody knew that that's what the situation was because all the protocols were still followed. The police came in and searched the building and did all of that. So she goes to hide in a store with a group of people. And two of these particular people have the signs of panic attacks, like they are not processing the situation well and they are not handling it uh, like somebody who has been in that situation before. So my question to you guys in an emergency situation, if I find myself in one, how do I keep other people calm? And I know that's a big question. So, you know, take Mm -hmm. it from there. Um, I think I'll start off with this. So that's a that's a great story because there there are there is a case before where the opposite happened where um and it was in I think uh Nebraska maybe yes. Hawkins I think is the name I get the name stuff confused Stephen Hawkins is the Stephen, uh, caper okay uh but mm. but uh he it was the same thing he came in shooting into a mall and people thought that it was balloons popping so it was the opposite reaction where they where they or they didn't Under-react. react right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and in this case okay over it um I I, I always say it's better to be safe than to sorry it, you know what I mean you can always say okay okay, my bad. Sorry to run and knock over your stuff while I was jumping for cover. I'll help you pick it up. But we all thought that in given times and what we've seen experience. So good on them for reacting. Uh, I'll yeah. start there. I just want to want to caveat it with that. But, you know, you talk about people getting what we call overwhelmed by emotion or overwhelmed by events, right? And, and you learned a little bit about that in class and what happens. But real simply, you know, panic will breed more panic and mm-hmm. calm will breed more calm. And so if I think about that, about taking that breath in that moment and focusing on what you can control and talking to people and communicating, right? I mean, realistically, let's say that was a real situation. Your your chances at that point of survival are, are, are fairly high. Okay, so it's 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 crazy because you may never have experienced that. You may never have been shot at before. You don't know what that is. So you've got stuff going on in your beard. There's catecholamines kicking in your body. You may have never <laughs> experienced before. Right. And so that's going to cause a lot of physiological reactions that you really can't control. But you can control your breathing. You can control what and how you think. Right. You focus on what you can control in those moments and communication. I mean, so if you're one of those people a little bit more calm and people are freaking out, you know, you can do the hey, I'm right here. We're going to get through this together. We've got a team. You're not alone, right? It's okay to be scared, but let's focus on what we need to do next. What is the immediate next steps, which is in those cases, guess what? It's really simple. It's your survival and safety. So you actually don't have to worry about a whole bunch of stuff. You just got to worry true. about one. Now it's the most extreme thing you have to <laughs> right. worry about, right? But but anything that you can control in that moment, you know, uh, anything that you can do, hey, where are we moving to next? What's the next thing we're going to do to stay alive? I'm going to do this and look out while you stay calm. Are your kids here? Like if you get people talking, communicating and having them breathe, uh, it'll it'll help relax the situation uh, at least to maybe a manageable level. Yeah. And and I, I took a bunch of notes. So I'm going to be dancing around between my two yellow pads here, Andy. What a great question. Uh, first and foremost, they were in danger and they were in real uh, uh, danger because the the panic uh, leads to fear. Uh, uh, fear can become unregulated and now you've got a stampede, people running, people mm-hmm. hiding, breaking out windows, jumping uh, uh, through windows and cutting themselves horrible uh, uh, second and third order injuries. Thank God that it wasn't a shooting, but people react as though it were that can be dangerous. I also added that uh, uh, the brain is constantly trying to make order out of chaos. And what that means is that if you're a calm, sane, sober, rational voice to those folks, Uh, They're looking for somebody to take charge or somebody in charge. So it's okay uh, to to, to yell uh, uh, loudly to get everybody's attention. Follow me. Everybody hit the deck, you know, uh, uh, you know, whatever the commands will be. And that comes with rehearsal. Look, you're talking to two guys have been shot at a whole bunch. and, And I can tell you, it never gets easier. But you you think on your feet more quickly because it's not your first rodeo. So. Remember that anxiety is the first step, and that's warning us about an upcoming uh, unpleasant experience. So pop, 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 you hear that, and all of a sudden the brain's catecholamine group and your electrochemical neurotransmitters are starting to function, going, what was that sound? And, and just like Brian uh, uh, taught in class about a trigger warning like running, you know, you're constantly looking around now. Are, are we running for free tickets to the, the you know, uh, Ariana Grande concert or are we, you know, running from a huge Tyrannosaurus Rex that escaped from Jurassic Park? Those are huge. So as anxiety starts ramping up, 
uh, panic sets in. And you mentioned panic. Well, panic is the most severe form of anxiety. And a human being's panic response is when they end up on a blank card. So they go through all of these file folders that they had prepared for emergencies, if they've gone through training, if they've had real events, if they've discussed this with their family. And now all of a sudden, they haven't discussed this specific scenario, and they come up with a blank card. And so now it's a crapshoot. It's the roll of the dice. So just like anger can lead to rage, we have to prevent anxiety from going to panic, right? And and that's a state where we're not functioning optimally and we can get hurt. So now we have fear. And, and fear is such a hugely important emotion. Fear is designed to mobilize us to deal with the danger at hand, right? So it starts when our limbic system senses that, okay, anxiety is on, panic is setting in, my, my outer corporeal self is changing, and limbic goes danger warning, Will Robinson, something's likely to cause us pain or be an immediate threat to our personal safety is out there, and I might just not feel or smell or see it yet. Pop, 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 right? At a distance. We don't see the gunman, but what's our brain doing? Our brain's creating explanatory storylines to keep us safe, and some of those are more frightening than the, the gunman right, walking through right. a crowd, yeah? And so while human reactions... Uh, uh, to fear can run the full gamut of, of, of emotions, your emotional responses are very highly personalized. So the reason that we always talk about training is that people bandy the words fight, flight, freeze, all those other things all the time, but they don't ever tie them to human survival. They don't ever explain to you that these three things are out of your control. These three or four things with training, you can make easier. So fear starts a chemical reaction in our brain designed to get our butts moving or to hit the deck or to low crawl or to fight back or to do all these amazing things. But if we've never tapped into that resource, guess what? They're not going to be available to us or they're going to be sporadic as like the movie says, sporadic enough that we're not going to be able to, to use them as efficiently as we could use them. Again, right back to training. Training for the real event uh, doesn't have to be expensive. You saw that. Uh, it costs you the the trip up there, lunch, a hotel room, right? Uh, you right. didn't have to go to the armory, stand in line, get a flash suppressor, buy a bunch of ammunition, do all this other stuff. Those trainings are great. I'm not, and I'm not dismissing those, but that doesn't do anything to prepare your brain uh, uh, for the upcoming event. Very good. And what I what I heard both of you guys talking about is how fear is actually useful. You know, a lot yeah. of people are afraid to be fearful, uh, but it actually is something that motivates you for survival. So, you know, if somebody, if this is a new concept to somebody, what is it that you can tell them to say, hey, you need to embrace your fear, but not necessarily give into it to the point where it becomes anxiety? Yeah, oh, yeah. that that goes with kind of that recognition of of where you're at. I mean, it, again, if you haven't had that that hit of adrenaline and cortisol and all that stuff that starts kicking in your body, you know, it can become over overwhelming, and you know, you'll start to kind of your your body starts taking more oxygen. You start to you, you your breathing might get off uh, of uh, you know kind of off key, and you're you're you become overwhelmed. That's why the first like thing that you can do is to take a breath, like actually be a very deliberate take a big inhale and big exhale. And then you can work from there of holding in. There's all different types of breathing exercises. They're great. But there's something in the moment that's the only autonomic function in your body. Cause you're, you're, you know, if you try to stop breathing, you're, you'll pass out and your body will take over. Right. It's like, yeah, right. I gotcha. Right. But, but it's the only autonomic function that you can control. So if you mm. focus on that one thing, you can actually control it and it'll have a more of a, a positive effect with handling all of those, those chemicals that come on board. Cause those are great things. Like Greg was saying, they're going to take any, that, that little, uh, you know, pain you had in your knee or lower back, that's gone. All of a sudden <laughs> you don't feel that anymore, <laughs> right? That cortisol lubricates those joints. You got all the blood going to major muscle groups. You're going to get strong real fast and you know, you're going to be able to jump much higher than you ever thought you could. But, but so that's an amazing thing. So if you look at it that way is what is my brain preparing me for, or what am I capable of and how can I use this to my advantage in the second right there? Um, you can do that. Now, does that take training and practice? Sure. But breathing doesn't. If you start getting very deliberate about breathing, I, I have to do that all the time. You know, I get frustrated with stuff or whatever. You know, I'm running late. You're driving. Okay, I better take a breath because I'm starting to get amped and I'm going to miss the kid crossing the street running to school or something. I mean, the, if, if I focus on those everyday moments where those things, you start to get a little overwhelmed. Maybe you're getting an argument with your spouse or something like that. You take a step back. Take a breath there. If you practice it, then it'll come in handy. Then that's one of the first things that can kick in for you. Uh, I know I've used it effectively before in the past. And, and, and I absolutely endorse uh, 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 Brian's talking about breathing and breathing exercises that you can do around the house before you go to bed, 
uh, before you public speak. Uh, all of those things are so helpful because those are rehearsals for the real event. And, you know, just like in the martial arts classes we teach, you know, in through the nose, out through the mouth, uh, keep some air in your stomach, not just in your lungs. Why? Because you have to regulate that feeling that I'm going to be sick because your body wants a purge before you run or before you fight. And, and you want to counteract those butterflies, we call them. That's that cortisol hitting that stomach and going, something has to happen, right? And your adrenal cortex is going to mess with you. So the breathing exercise helps you take control of that and slow it down. Now, you're going to be panting like a dog on a hot day. So you have to understand that you really have to fight for it. It's not going to be easy. And we still fall into that. Uh, uh, we'll be in a situation where a loud uh, car backfire or an actual gunshot from a close by range will trigger those emotions. And here we go again. So if you don't practice them now, the last time that you want to be practicing them is when it is a mall shooting and you happen to be at the Cinnabon. That's where I would be. Uh, I would I would also suggest running scenarios in your mind. Now, this is going to sound really goofy, but uh, uh, you're watching this in November. Uh, uh, you just passed Halloween. I love the old school uh, British Halloween horror films. I say, is that a vampire? Yes, indeed it is. <laughs> what I would like you to do is just pick one of your favorite old uh, uh, Halloween horror flicks from uh, uh, the season. And when that film, or, or you can do it with a, a thriller too, sometimes like Silence of the Lamb, something like that, whatever your genre is, but the thriller or the horror are the best. And when that film comes to a dilemma, pause the film and use it as like a family or a group discussion or a self-guided discussion if you're alone like me and discuss what emotions you probably feel during that and, and what that would come to you like and, and, and how you would avoid that or how you would manage that stress. And you'd be surprised if you role play with yourself, you will get an amazing amount of return for your investment and you won't be shocked or surprised. Shock, amazement, surprise. Those are from people that don't plan ahead and don't anticipate what's likely to occur, right? So even doing it with a film or driving by a 7-Eleven and going, hey, if I was getting gas at that 7-Eleven, I walked in and there was a guy with a shotgun, I tell you what I would do. Those uh, are huge for your mind. It's like, where's Waldo? Your brain loves it. And it keeps you from being hyper vigilant, uh, hyper alert and afraid all the time. You know, it's it's funny, Greg. I do those same things. Uh, like when I'm at the gas station. Of course, you guys, we have all three talked about how to survive the gas station before. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll do that. I'm like, I'll go pump gas. Okay, I'm gonna do this, this, and this. What if this, this, and this happens? So it's good to know that I'm not completely crazy. So I, I appreciate. Well, it. wait a minute. Well, let's we, not go we, that far. One <laughs> distinction. Okay, we don't know about that psychologically. You've got problems, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> so um, you guys have had a wealth of experience throughout your lives and throughout your careers. Is there a story that you can tell that kind of emulates what you're talking about here about making sure that somebody else was safe in a situation that you were in? Um, what would you guys like to share with us? I, I mean, I've I've even seen that in combat situations with with trained Marines where where something happens or taken by surprise and you you become what we call that OBE, right? Overwhelmed by events. And there, you know, there's different sayings where people call it like they're in condition black, right? You're, you're just completely out mm -hmm. of it. You literally can't do anything. And that's in those situations I've had to like grab people. I'm like, Hey man, like literally almost slap them. Like, Hey, you good? Here's what's going on. And they're like, they, they kind of come out of it from there because there's some training and experience involved with those folks. Right. But meaning it can happen to them too. So sometimes just that kind of slap on the butt, and saying, hey, this is happening. Here we are. Let's go. And then they usually just snap right out of it and, and go, right? Because you can you can become that. And that's happened to me. I mean, I, I we took a, a, a actual rocket and RPG came into the room that I was in. I was taking a nap. And so, you know, blew right through the, the wall of the house, went right over me. Uh, knocked out this partition that I was sleeping next to and uh, just, just, it just didn't detonate. But like I, so I immediately jumped up and, you know, grabbed my rifle and I think we're in contact and I run up there. And meanwhile, some guys are still like, what we had no idea what was going on because we weren't sleeping much. So the little sleep you got, you were in deep sleep sometimes. Right. And so they got up and I'd be like, Hey, grab it. We just took contact. And then they immediately started getting their stuff on, but they were so overwhelmed and literally couldn't process it. And they're looking at a rocket, like laying on the ground that just didn't detonate. But I, we didn't know if it was going to detonate still. Right. So the idea is like, you know, you, you, it can happen to anyone, but just to kind of like Greg mentioned, you know, it just takes one person to 
take take charge right and you say hey here's what's going on and people will fall in line people will snap to and they know because their survival system kicks up takes in and goes hey we're a little out of it and uh this guy or girl seems to know what's going on so why don't we uh, do what they're doing and you will you will mimic their behavior yeah it's so true and mirror neurons are, are so strong in human beings and so making order out of chaos is sometimes you reaching down grabbing somebody by the chest and making eye contact and saying, he's dead, you're not, let's move. Very simple commands. And then, as Brian said, they'll kick in. Uh, again, those uh, endorphins are, are designed for a reason, not just to race the people in your tribe to see who's the fastest, but to race uh, away from that danger. Uh, and I'll give you a good one and a bad one. Uh, so in all the years that I had to do hostage negotiations, and it's a different thing now, it's called uh, uh, opportunity talking or something, right? Because they don't want to use two bad words in there. But the key was to quickly allow the person that had the gun and dead bodies around and stick it in their mouth or whatever that was going on to see the gravity of the current situation, but then create a model of what the immediate future might look like. Because if you didn't give an alternative to the violence and you didn't keep talking, then that person was going to continue to choose that path and either blow themselves away, blow you away, or continue killing. So the idea is you got to get into the human psyche, even if the person's a broken human, and go, okay, you know, give me 60 seconds or whatever it is that you got to do in that moment to make sure that they're looking at you and focus. And I'll give you a bad one for me. Uh, uh, I was working in shift that I didn't normally shift. I worked uh, midnights for a dozen years. And then all of a sudden, because of a wedding, I was on this day shift going through, uh, see some broken glass. The glint on the ground was very remarkable. Pulled through this factory district, get out of my sled looking around and it's clearly a burglary that you know in the office structure so i go back to my sled grab my pr24 and because i'm a little bigger than the burglary boy i'm flogging out the window climbing in moving the desk out of the way and the door to the office opens and all of a sudden you know things change immediately it's like mm. okay fight or flight survival what am i going to do i'm going to freeze but what i didn't know is this factory is open all weekends long as a matter of fact it's 24 hours a day the burglary to the office happened overnight and they were already aware of it and called in and somebody was going to come out and make a report later. So here I'm in my perfect self-defense, self-survival, you know, internal mode. And I'd never considered alternatives. Had I driven all the way around the building, had I called out my location, had I paused for just a second and given my brain the gift of time and distance. But what I did is I rode that chemical wave. So even experts, even people that are at the top of their game make those mistakes. So you have no chance unless you take a knee once in a while and go, okay, what would I do in this situation? Now, everybody's an expert because God, Buddha, Vishnu, Allah made you an expert on survival. They gave you these chemicals. They gave you fears so you would survive the situation. If not, we would have you know, burned out so many years ago. But you have to listen to those and know what they feel like or smell like or taste like when you're in the situation. And early on, when I would make those mistakes, man, that became a story I knew later I would be telling in a class somewhere or on a podcast, you know, <laughs> to open up somebody's brain. Very good. You know, and and so what what I'm, I'm hearing from you guys, is it's never going to be perfect. You have to have stress inoculation. You have to work on this. So for the person who is hearing this and they're saying, you know, maybe I'm not prepared for a situation like this. What is it other than some of these exercises that they need to do? Like, what can I do to work on myself? You know, obviously I've already yeah. admitted to, I have all these random thoughts about going to the gas station and places like that. But for like a normal person, what would, uh, what would they need to do? It, and uh, it kind of goes back to what Greg brought up about anticipating, you know, kind of likely events is what would I do in this situation? You know, and if we approach it from from that way uh, as a perspective, especially with a family, you know, you, you can you can you have a plan. It's never going to be perfect, but having a plan is better than nothing at all. Knowing, hey, if anything happens, we're going to meet back up at this point. If you get separated, I want you to go here. Um, when, if this situation ever occurred, this is what I want you to do. And that might depend on if you're child is alone and you're telling them what to do or they're with you as a family and having those things to rehearse you know as you're going to the mall with your family when you get there hey remember what we said if this occurs it's unlikely when you when you talk about it in in that in that way it it it, it lessens uh the the 
you know, it lessens that that overwhelming response because now at least I, I have something to go on and it takes away some of that fear and anxiety, right? A lot of times we get these things wrong because people just don't understand them. And as humans, we naturally fear things we don't understand. And so if I'm already in that survival space, like I'm not thinking through the situation. So simply having discussions like this and saying, all right, if this were to occur, Here's what our options are, right? Here's what's likely. Here's what's unlikely. Hey, we can always go back here. You can always go up and ask uh, someone who works at this place for help. You can find exits in all of these different areas. Those little things, it's enough uh, uh, that that in that sort of situation, your brain will go, hey, I remember someone saying this thing one time. Right. Because otherwise, if it draws a blank, then you have to figure it out. And and that's not good when, 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 when a, a real life situation occurs. You don't want to have to create or think through the problem. You want to have some sort of something to some comparative baseline to go off of. So you have some options available already. And, and I, I, Andy, I love Brian's use of anticipation. So I think if we had a bucket for the English language, a lot of the lexicon would go in the same little ice cube tray. So Anticipation and prediction. Uh, uh, let's talk about two quick points of view on prediction. Uh, I have a son or daughter, and my son or daughter would never, and then blank. Uh, uh, my kid would never blank. My car would never blank. My wife or significant other would never blank. My house would never blank. My heart would never blank. If you're sitting there uh, wearing those rose-colored glasses and stumbling through your life with that, you know, most likely course of action is everything's okay alarm, you know, <laughs> and I only take charge when it stops, then you're going to have a uh, spontaneous lifestyle that I wouldn't want. Uh, oh, yeah. What you do is you don't predict danger in every situation, but you turn it into a game and say, in this situation, if the people in this room were doing this, or if a person had a heart attack at the gas station, or I needed to use Heimlich at a restaurant, would I be prepared and run through those mental models? Look, I detach myself from the more dangerous situations I, I have been involved in and I become involved in. And I literally watch action, Greg, going through as I'm controlling them from the control room. OK, now turn to the left. Remember, there might be multiple opponents. OK, open your eyes a little bit wider. It's getting darker. Where's my you know, source of illumination? Uh, have I called somebody yet? turn and call 911 now you know those type of things that you go through actually make future events easier and you can do them while you're watching a commercial at home you can do them while you're doing yard work you can do them while you're washing your car so if you've got downtime where your mind is going to wander anywhere uh anyway rather let it wander to some place that would be safe and when i say hey my kids would never i would rather have a plan for my son or daughter who are your age now, Andy. So my grandson or daughter who are like Brian's age. So I have to go great grandkids. But if, if, if I didn't think about my great grandkid coming home with a failed grade or sneaking out of the window to go out and do something, if I don't process that those are likely occurrences in a teenager's life, then when it happens, I'm going to be one dumbfounded and two crestfallen. I'm going to sit there. How did it happen to me? I'm going to internalize it. And then I'll start crying and it won't be worth a damn on the phone. And when the coppers come so run through those simplest scenarios and then change them up a little bit. Okay. Now it's me that's lost. What would I do first? What are the first things I would do? Uh, I'll tell you what, it, it makes you stronger and more resilient uh, psychologically and physiologically. I guarantee that you're going to see a difference on like a fMRI or any of the other brain science that shows that just that rehearsal is making you smarter, stronger, and harder to kill. That's that, that is great advice. And I really like it. And, and to kind of go along with anticipation, Brian, when you were, you were talking, um, it reminded me of something I see frequently. I get to coach youth basketball and I can't tell you how many times I see a kid just stand on the court with a blank expression on their face because they have no idea how to deal with the fact that the other team just stole the ball and they're yeah. now going the other <laughs> what way. What do I do? And right. like, what do I? And that's where the coach is like, "Hey, go down court, go down." Yeah. So, like, I, it's funny when you when you start to understand these things a little bit better. How even just watching a youth basketball game, you understand the human thinking and the processing that goes along with that, and to try to coach your kids to do to be a little bit better, to be a little bit more prepared. Um, yeah. because when we can put our kids in this situation, like you're saying, and we can coach them through what potentially might happen, 
um, that's when I feel like they're going to have that best case for success. And, and Greg, what I like with you were saying at the end was if I don't prepare myself for my kid having a bad day or bad experience, I'm not going to be ready to serve them as a parent. And I'm not going to exactly. be ready to handle this uh, when this happens. So yeah, don't, you're not thinking ill of your child in that particular situation. Right. You're just trying to make yourself a, a better parent. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I'm saying to your church and your community and your significant other, I'm saying everybody around you, look, you don't want to be known as Mr. Know-it-all. Uh, I was out on a, a ranch uh, one time and uh, they had some uh, things that had from a fly fishing class had been tangled up on an electric cord that ran from the ranch to the, to the shed. And a gentleman said, Hey, I know what to do in this situation, grabbed a PVC pipe and went to put the PVC up against it to get the items down. And I was like, stop for a minute. You're all going to die. And sure enough, uh, the electricity arced and knocked him on his butt and thank God didn't kill him. Uh, but it was a trip to the emergency room. And everybody said, how did you know? Well, I understand the principles of electric. And even though PVC is not going to be a conduit, it's a straight line and electricity loves straight lines. I also know that if there's silage and uh, uh, there's a lot of gas built up at the bottom of a well or a hole that you could be overcome by fumes. And if you see a traffic accident and an electric pulls down, man, that's killing first responders. So those simple things when you're driving around and role playing them in your mind will make it better to you and to all those people around you. So, you know, I don't want to say opponent rather than victim. I just want to mean uh, a better witness, a better witness to life around you so you don't become a victim and that you can help a person by intervening. Hey, wait just a second, kids. This is unsafe, you know? And those are those are the moments that I think and I thank my my dad for. My mom was, we were a hidden clan, right? So my mom was more two-fisted, teaching you lessons that you'll never forget from bruising. And my dad would reach up and grab us once in a while and go, Scenario one, uh, this is going to happen. And these things, that are, and, and I would be a little kid going, what do you mean scenario one? But then all of a sudden I followed his logic and it was like, wow, he's not telling me what to do. He's telling me how to process the information. He's not telling me, here's my range of responses. He's telling me, this is how you think through the problem. And that's where all of my side of this uh, event came from is my dad's ability to process complex situations at a rate that was insane compared to the other people in the room that were watching the stolen ball and the three point shot that followed. Right. And, and my dad was always ahead. Hey, take a knee, watch, this is going to turn bad. And, and I was like, how did he know those things? It's just certain humans are more in tune and you can teach that you can share that uh, within your tribe. Yeah. And your basketball one is perfect. Andy, because yeah. it brings in, you know, with that, that kid having sort of like what we call like a non-standard observation, like well, that never happened to me before. Right. So completely flat footed. So if you ever think of like kids where they're looking at something, they kind of do the head tilt yeah. and they're looking for longer. It's because they don't have the file folder. So they're pro it takes exactly. them longer to process. Right. So that's it. Think about this happening in those situations. So like for that kid, it's like, all right, yeah, there's a lot you got to learn about basketball and we're trying to beat the other team and score points. Well, Hey, at a minimum, like, we, we have to have the ball. Oh, okay. So if I, if, if, if the bare minimum thing is to <laughs> take, maintain control of the ball, then at least I have something to go off of when it doesn't happen. Well, that's the same thing with anything in your life. Like, all right, safety and security is first in these situations. What's rule number one, stay alive. Right. Okay. Right. So if I just think of stay alive, you know, I'll fall down to something and then your brain will go, there's an out over there. That looks like it'll help us stay alive. It'll start filling that in. If I have that basic understanding of what's rule number one, you know what I mean? So I, it, breaking it down simply like that, I, I love that. That's a great example too. Very yeah, cool. And, and I would add one thing, Andy, stop thinking that you're a superhuman. We're mm -hmm. all humans. And yes, sometimes we have superhuman characteristics that come from our onboard chemistry, but you're going to think that don't worry, when the situation arises, I'll do fine. Have you ever heard about an emergency service worker or a, a law enforcement professional drowning, going in to save a person that's drowning in a pond or a pool? You don't know what's coming. So you have to keep yourself, uh, your mental acumen up. You have to keep your physical fitness up and you have to constantly be processing the information about a cost benefit analysis because one day you're going to be tapped and they're going to say it's your turn. And, and so how would you want to approach it? I would love to approach that by thinking back of all the hours I spent in training, all the times that, look, if you don't want to come to our training, watch training on YouTube, find a reputable person that, do, uh, that does right. it or get our book. Or if you don't want our book, get somebody else's book. But the idea is, Get the two training for that real event. Look, uh, uh, you ever change a tire on a rainy night, dark, on a freeway? 
uh, dad no, rule 101, got to learn how to change that tire. And guess what? If them lug nuts are rounded off, this is what you use. And this is how you can make a lift if you need a lift. My dad was constantly brainstorming a little simple thing like that so we didn't get squashed like a bug out on the freeway and we could continue with the mission. So I like that. I like simple interventions rather than costly long-term interventions. Very good. And you guys, you just teased the book. So as we wrap up here, uh, uh, tell me a little bit more about this book. I've already ordered mine. It's in the mail on the way uh, to me. So yeah. like, uh, tell everybody so, else about it. So real quick, Andy, that'll be going out today. I know everyone got the email saying it's it's shipped, but it's, it's technically that's what happens when I apparently print the shipping labels. Yeah. <laughs> so it's some... I was like, oh man, so it, it's going out today, but it, it, it'll be there in a couple of days. But yeah, we we have our textbook out that kind of tied into some of the stuff we were building for for not just Liberty University, but other other folks that want to use the material, but it is a textbook. So, you know, for you, you'll get it and you'll be right back in class and you'd be like, oh yeah, this, and it'll be your great kind of manual in a sense and a guide, but there's a ton of information in there. I mean, it goes deep down into the human behavior stuff like you learned in training, but there's also some some great takeaways in there. Some, you know, some here's some charts, here's some considerations, here's what to think about and how to look at situations that anyone can just open that up and look at it and go, wow, I've never thought of it that way. And and that alone is is great to educate yourself on. Um, so we can order that. I'll send you the links for everyone to 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 order that. Yeah. And then if they sign up at the Arcadia website, I would recommend that because then you'll get a discount code sent to you. Uh, not not, not quite with the friends and family one that you got, uh, uh, Andy, for those uh, original supporters. But we have you that. Deserve it, buddy. What, what we're putting out, too, is um, kind of a video-based student guide that's going to go along with it. So it'll kind of have some tutorials, in a sense, and us out on the street explaining some of this stuff in real time. Uh, it'll have uh, different presentations that Greg and I will do to kind of fit along with some of the lessons. So you can go along and kind of pick, you know, because some of these some of the concepts you can go really deep on and some are just you want to keep topical and just understand so we want to be able to provide that balance so that's all coming out uh by the end of the year here too so um that'll be out as well but yeah this the textbook will be ready to go by the time people are listening to this so i will i will absolutely send you the link awesome. and I, I would also special shout out to brian Marin for being able to put up with me for all the things saying no 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 when we were yellow padding and i was telling the story and he was like, that doesn't make any sense. You got to think laterally. And, and, you know, I think astrally, I think. Uh, so Brian was able to do a, a, an incredible edit. And uh, you'll see uh, from the information the difference between previous works, which were, you know, uh, hey, I saw this somewhere uh, to, hey, this is the origin story. Let's go. Uh, and and please give us feedback. I love that. I, I can't wait till you see it. I've got my copy on the kitchen table. I was saying, oh, I wish I could have held it up. I'm, I'm so proud of it. Uh, and what I did at the beginning, we, we saw Eric Collier at uh, Liberty, which is always wonderful because, you know, Liberty is a great place to meet our old friends. And uh, he was doing the same thing I was doing because it was the first time we'd seen it in print. And we were paging through and just grabbing a, a, a comment or a, a, a paragraph here and there. And it was like amazing because Brian and I had written it two years ago. So it was really hard for us to go, oh, man, that's a good story. I forgot that we put that in there. And Brian didn't tell you, but there's also some amazing photographs in there yeah. uh, from us in action. Uh, so you get to see the the things happening as they occurred, uh, not somebody retelling the story three or four times. We're excited, and thank you for buying one. I, I didn't even think about that, uh, but it's it. You're you're. I, I hope you're as impressed as I was when I first saw it. Oh, I'm sure I will be. Um, Brian has been sharing like a few of the videos for your training yeah. stuff on Patreon. Oh, okay. And so it and it's like you know you're standing in a parking lot, which all of us stand in a parking lot, and you're like, hey, let's just break this down. Here's X, Y, and Z. Be cognizant of this and all of that, and it makes complete sense, and it's shot Aww. very well. And uh, the microphone you guys are using is fantastic. Um, well, so let, let me let me stuff. throw this at you, okay? Brian will see something, or I will see something while we're driving, and we're on the way to something. We got a plan. It's on the freeway. This and that. Hey, take this exit. Do this. Do that. We'll drive around. Brian's handing me the body mic. He's getting the camera ready, and we'll jump out and do it spontaneously. <laughs> so there's no review, no cut, no take two, none of that, no lighting. So I so appreciate you saying that. Because folks were down and dirty on the street trying to get it as it happens, rather than doing some high production quality, you know, rehearsal in a studio. So thank you so much. That means so much that you're actually seeing that we're trying to to get it to you as it happens, you know, and and that it's helpful. That's the most important thing that that somebody can take something from it and pay it forward. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. So guys, thank you so much for your time. As always, uh-huh. I appreciate what you're doing. Uh, Brian, tell everybody where can they can find out more about you. Yeah, ArcadiaCognorati.com. Uh, A- A-R-C-A-D-I-A. Cognorati is C-O-G-N-E-R-A-T-I.com. Uh, you can go to the website and then we're on social media. So we're, we're getting some great feedback from folks on there. Uh, so Instagram is a good way to kind of get a window into one of our courses in a sense. You kind of get to see some of our explanations of stuff. Um, you know, it might be a little out of context for you, but the more you follow along and, and you'll kind of be like, oh, I see what they're getting at here. And um, so that's a great spot. And then you can always reach out to me as well, but I'm sure you'll have the, the links in there. Yep. Um, if, if anyone has any questions, we answer them. And then of course our, our podcast, the Left of yep. Greg podcast where we really deep dive a lot of this stuff and um that you can just left of greg at gmail is is an easy easy one to remember um but you can listen to us there and and reach out and and we love answering questions from folks and uh quick we're on linkedin for information so like if we have a burst about a course that's coming up or something you can reach out for for LinkedIn. that's a great spot too to just look us up on linkedin and connect and be like hey i heard you on uh the secure dad just want to stay connected because you'll find out same thing we post anything about training or different stuff on there as well so that's a great way to stay in touch and all all the folks that we know know that we're on the 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 secure dad today they're all excited about the release date of this one because they're fans of the show Uh, so your fans become ours and vice versa andy it's been a long run and it's great we really thank you for that i I appreciate y'all because i I, i've said you know to you guys and to other people that i feel like you're two of the smartest people on earth and i just Uh i appreciate what you guys are doing and how you can make this app you know applicable to everybody and make you know everybody understand it so and that's why i think you guys shooting the videos in the parking lot makes the most sense because that's where the action happens don't try to recreate it in the studio just just be where the action is so that makes perfect sense that's great yeah we appreciate it. i'm glad you're liking it because it's good I'm, i appreciate your feedback as well you've given us some great stuff over the years and yes we sir they're appreciative for that of that so All right, guys, I'm looking forward to the book and what else you guys have, you know, in store for the future. Appreciate y'all. Thank you so much, Andy.